Hey friends, it's Mel. Thank you so much for stopping into my kitchen tonight. I'm so glad that you decided to join me for this week's What's for Dinner. It's a really special collab this week with my friend Megan from Megan's Kitchen. I'll be sure to leave her What's for Dinner video and her channel link down in my description box. Megan does an array of different kinds of foods and she does them all so well. Megan does everything from your everyday classic American hamburgers, hot dogs, fried chicken, uh, that kind of stuff, to Hispanic meals. She does some copycat recipes and she can do Asian food like nobody's business. I saw her do some sushi rolls that really impressed me one day. So you're gonna enjoy Megan's channel. Be sure after you finish watching my What's For Dinner to go over and check Megan's channel out. Let her know in the comments that you're coming over from Mel's. And if you're here from Megan's channel, I'm Melanie, everybody calls me Mel, and I'm so glad you're here. I hope you'll like what you see and I hope that you'll stick around for a while. I also post What's For Dinners every Sunday night at eight o'clock and on Wednesdays at eight, I usually post a grocery haul or some other little kind of content. So let's just get to it. Grab that sweet tea, sit down, kick back and relax, and let me and Megan do the cooking tonight. All right, I got a bunch of stuff laid out here. The first thing I'm gonna do is chop up this red onion, believe it or not. I've never made Mexican street corn. I saw this little dish on Pinterest and I thought, now that sounds good to me. I love corn on the cob, but it is messy and most of your street corns, I'd say that will be enough, are on the cob. And I thought this looked good and you could throw it in the crock pot and just leave it a couple of hours. And it would be ready while you're doing something else. So that's what we're making today. You know, I'll leave the recipe linked for you. I'm going to deseed this because I think I've told you guys before, I do not like spicy stuff. This is probably going to be too much for me. And this recipe called for two. Something else is called for that I just could not find at Kroger's was the Kyoto, Kyoto cheese. I don't know how to spell it. It's like C-O-J-A-I-T-I, -I, something like that. It's a Mexican cheese. I checked Kroger's and my daughter checked somewhere. I'm not sure where she checked before she came home in or before she came uh in the other night home, she checked another store that she was gonna go buy. It might've been Aldi. They didn't have it, but it said, you know, you could sub feta cheese and this queso, this fresco, that's what I'm gonna be using. And my knife skills are not the greatest. I am just a good old home Southern cook. I am not a professional. What you get it's just exactly what you see here. Eight ounce block of softened cream cheese. Plop it in. Half a cup of mayonnaise. Okay, that's good enough. Y'all, for years I have seen my daddy eat mayonnaise just on plain old corn on the cob. And everybody's just like, hey, what? Hey, I told him the other day, I said, Daddy, you and Mama, because he got it from his mama, she eat mayonnaise on everything, too. I said, you guys were fancy street corn eating people before it was even a thing. So let's get our cream cheese and our mayonnaise. Let's just kind of get that mixed in a little bit together. Then we're going to add some seasonings to this little mixture. Into this, we're going to put in two teaspoons of sea salt. And I just happen to have this little thing of sea salt. 
I use it when I'm baking potatoes a lot of times. I'll coat them in that. There's one. There's two. Then we're going to use two teaspoons of chili powder. Then we're going to use two teaspoons of cumin. It's smelling good already in here. And two teaspoons of paprika. It also called for cilantro in this recipe. Not a big cilantro fan, so I'm just leaving that out. Something I get asked an awful lot on here is comments about these mixing bowls right here. People are telling how pretty they are, asking about them. I got these at Sam's Club. If I have been putting a link to these down in my description box for you. And then I also showed them in the store in that little Sam's shop with me that I did. Oh, I guess it was our, like really early in the morning Sunday. I wanted to get that up for you because I found all those August deals I didn't know were going on. And they were only good till Wednesday this week. Anyway, back on track. I showed these bowls in the store there, but you can order them online. They don't have this exact design anymore, but they have some very pretty ones. And usually in the fall, they'll come out with some new designs. They'll have five or six of them if you get them when they first come out. And then they also do it in the spring and summer. This was in a spring and summer collection a couple years ago that I got these and there's five of them in a set they have these little grippy rings on the bottom keep them from sliding and they every one have a lid and they're melamine so they're nice and light all right to this we're going to add a cup of this cheese now I know this is not some exotic ingredient but I have never worked with it. And I think this is like a crumbly cheese, looks like it is. And you need a cup and a half of this. If you're gonna put a cup in here, and then a half a cup, you'll put over the top when it's done. So I'm just gonna kind of crumble. Oh yes, it crumbles up good. And I'm just, this is 10 ounces. So this is half of it, so that'd be five. So we'll grab a little bit more of the rest of that. Let's mix that up a little bit. Well, that's pretty. All them spices down in there. To this, you're going to add two bags of frozen corn to 12 ounce bags. I like to use this super sweet. And I'm putting mine in just right from frozen. I'm not even steaming it in the microwave. So we got two bags of corn. Add in our onion and our jalapenos. But I only used one. I started to have this recipe. And Lord, it looks like I should have. I'll have to take some of this to friends and neighbors. You need a half a cup of salsa. I forgot when I was reading through this on Pinterest, it did say it froze well. So if we don't get it all eat and give away, I can put this in the freezer and pull it out. Wouldn't this be good as a dip? Look how pretty this is, all these colors. And you know this is just gonna really come together in that crock pot when it gets to heating up. All right, even though I've got a liner, I'm still gonna spray it. Just cause it's sticking on the sides. Now let's dump this stuff in here. I pulled out my bigger crock pot too for this. 
because I wanted it to have room to spread out. So all you're going to do is turn your crock pot on low for two hours. Then, after two hours, come back in, crumble up the rest of that queso fresco cheese, sprinkle it with some paprika, and serve it. And then I just put the lid on and let it set a little bit longer to melt down that cheese a bit. Then I just stirred it in. We're going to work on our Mexican pizzas now. The first thing I'm doing is fixing up some taco meat, just like I would if I were making regular tacos. I'm also going to prepare a can of refried beans and I'm just going to doctor them up like I normally do if we're having tacos too. I'd like to put a little bit of taco seasoning or taco sauce and a little sour cream and some shredded cheese in it and warm it over. This just makes it extra creamy and gives it a little extra depth of flavor. Now I'm going to make three of these Mexican pizzas. So the first thing you do is preheat your oven to about 375 and spray a baking sheet. I put my tortillas on there, cooked them about three minutes, pulled them out, flipped them over, and cooked them another three minutes. And then I repeated this with another three tortillas because I needed six in all. You're just gonna start layering them on now. The first layer is gonna be a nice generous serving of refried beans, and then you're gonna layer on your taco meat. Of course, in my normal fashion, I way overstuffed mine, and they were pretty messy. Put your next tortilla on, and I am using taco sauce. You can also use red enchilada sauce for this. Then I had some Mexican cheese. You can use whatever cheese you have or whatever you like, but I had this Mexican blend, and I put a nice generous amount on that. And then you're gonna stick it back in the oven and just give it three or four minutes. Watch it until that cheese is melted. I did not use black olives, but I topped mine with tomatoes and green onions. The main thing you need to be careful of with these Mexican pizzas is to not overbake your tortillas or they will get tough. But we absolutely love this. I have to be honest, the Mexican street corn, everybody liked it, but I didn't. I so wanted to like it, but I just did not like those flavors together. I'm gonna stick to my good Southern sweet corn. The next dish that I'm making is a stovetop cheeseburger pasta. And this was a recipe that I found on the Taste of Home website. I'm boiling this box of penne pasta, and then I'm starting with a pound of ground beef, browning that up, seasoning it, and I don't think the recipe called for onions, but I very rarely make ground beef that I don't put some onions in it. I'm going to brown that up and then drain off the grease. Then, in that same saucepan, I just took a half of a stick of butter and melted that down. Then I sprinkled in about a half a cup of flour, cooked that about two or three minutes until you get the uh, raw flour taste out. Then I'm going to whisk in milk, and that is about two cups of milk and some beef broth. It was a cup and a fourth of beef broth. and I did not have dry mustard. I just used regular yellow mustard and I put in about two or three teaspoons of that. You're gonna get all that whisk in really good, 
bring it up back up to a boil just keep stirring it the whole time until it gets a little bit thicker that just takes probably a minute or two I did of course go ahead and salt that some more and pepper it some more as that was cooking up Then you stir in like a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes, juice, and everything. Bring it back up to a boil and then reduce the heat and cover and simmer that for about 15 minutes. Once you've let that simmer, you're going to stir back in your cooked pasta. And the recipe calls, I think, for three cups of cheese. I did not use that much. I probably used a cup and a half of cheese that I put in right here. And I used cheddar. I think it called for Colby Jack, but I just used cheddar. That is what I had. And, you know, this is a, a large pot. This is what I make chili in, but um, it really filled it up. And then it also called for about two-thirds cup of Parmesan cheese. That gives it a little bit of salty bite. You're going to add in some green onions, about four of those that I have chopped up, and your drained hamburger meat. You're going to stir all this in together, then sprinkle a little bit more cheese on the top. Just cover it and let it set for a little while till it sets up. Now guys, this, I was kind of disappointed in it. It was good. I liked it, and one of my daughters liked it. My husband and my youngest, they were not big fans of it. They ate some, but um, I'll say this. I would have just as soon had a box of Hamburger Helper cheeseburger macaroni. I like the flavor of that better. This was good, but usually taste of home recipes are a lot better than that. Hey everybody, it's just me here for a little bit, so I thought I'd talk to you. Tonight, I'm whipping up a lasagna. I have a lasagna video on my channel. Probably none of you have seen it. It was one of the first ones that I put out. I didn't really have lasagna on the meal plan for this week, but my baby girl, she's 17, and uh, She's sort of a picky eater. That's all right. She can be picky, but she has been so kind. These last couple months, I've wanted to, you know, try a few different things that put out here on my channel for you guys to see. And the old girl, she's been trying a lot of new stuff, and she's found some things that she likes. And baby girl asked for. Lasagna. Baby girl's getting lasagna. So I'm just browning up some ground beef here. I've thrown in a little bit of salt and pepper, garlic, a little bit of Italian seasoning, a little bit of onion powder, and a little bit of garlic powder. This all browned up here. I'm going to throw in some of these frozen onions. I'm just trying to get her done today. All right, let's let that finish browning up and let's start mixing up our cheese layer for our lasagna. I like to use cottage cheese. I just prefer the taste of it. Like a 16 ounce container of cottage cheese. It would slide right out, but it's not. I'm gonna put me an egg, put it over there to the side so I can kind of squish it around. I don't bother beating it in a separate bowl. Y'all know I'm all about quick and easy over here. I want it to be good and flavorful, but that don't mean it can't be quick and easy too. I'm real sorry about that first dinner in tonight's video. I liked it. 
me and Callie, one of my daughters, we both really liked it. It was sort of like a hamburger helper, cheeseburger macaroni, but hey, honestly, I like that old hamburger helper, cheeseburger macaroni. There is no shame in that stuff. I love it. But it had that kind of vibe, and I should have known when I pulled out that big 28 ounce thing of crushed tomatoes, that was nothing that my husband was gonna like. And I liked it, Callie liked it. Patrick and Maddie did not like it so much. They still ate some of it, but you know, it is what it is. I liked it, but I'll say this, I mean, I'm not gonna make it again because you know, my family, all of us didn't like it. But that's what happens when you try new stuff. You just never know. All right, let's throw some salt pepper in this mixture. Pepper, a little salt. Let's throw some Italian seasoning down in our cheese. Let it work. Let's do it like this. Get how much I want. Yeah, that's probably good. <clears throat> let's put some of this green can cheese in it. I just kind of eyeball these mixtures. I don't know, that's maybe a fourth of a cup. Then I've got some of this kind of Parmesan in a bag. This is not going to be a huge, huge lasagna either. This will fill a 9 by 13 with, um, you know, two layers, but that's all we need. Now, let's go in for the main part with mozzarella cheese. I have a little bit left in this bag. And then it seems like everything I've went to make this week, I've had to go get cheese out of the freezer. So I've got it laying here trying to thaw out enough so that I can use it. And I'm gonna put about a cup and a half of mozzarella in this. All right, let me go drain my meat. Okay, I believe I've got me probably about a half a cup of that. Here comes a little bit of this. It's a little frozen still, but that's all right. All right. Let's mix all this up now. Hope everybody's having a good week. Is it hot where you're at? You'll have to leave me uh, your weather report down in the comments. It has been hot as all get out around here. It's been in the 90s with the heat index well into the hundreds, the triple digits. Y'all, we just need to pray for folks that's affected by this heat. Those that maybe don't have air conditioning, people that are homeless, that, you know, they have somewhere to get in out of this. And pray for your guys that work outside. I think I've told y'all this before. My husband, he is an, a lineman for our city's electric department. And those guys are feeling it. All the public utility workers and, uh, you know, all of them, whatever they do, they are feeling it. And my husband goes on call this weekend, too, which, whoo, let's hope there's not any bad storms come through. But when it's hot like this, you just don't ever know what's going to happen. And it makes it scary. It's a dangerous job, and the weather just compounds that, and the heat just makes it even worse. All right, I've got the grease drained off of my hamburger meat here. I'm just going to throw it back in my skillet. I've got the heat cut off, and I have this Prego roasted garlic and herb. And I'm just going to put this right down in this meat and get everything stirred together. Like any good salt of the earth woman, I take a little bit of water in that jar, shake her up, because we don't waste nothing, do we? <laughs> I'm gonna 
put some more Tate seasoning down actually in this sauce too. You could easily double this, make you another one and put it in the freezer or if you've just got a great old big family, make a bigger one or make two small ones. Uh, this 9 by 13 pan I'm getting ready to show you. I'm going to spray it so nothing sticks before we start building this. And these are, uh, are some pans, some baking dishes actually. I get asked about them a lot too. And I got these from Belk. They're from a company called Balm Brothers, I think. B-A-U-M. I'll put it down in the description box if I can remember. They, of course, you know how I am. I got them on clearance and they were closing them out. They make you think of the temptations that they sell on QBC. But they, of course, like I said, they don't have these exact ones. I got them on clearance, but I got this one, a larger size baking dish, and then an oval one that's really deep. All right. And I also got some maroon ones. You may have seen me using them before, and they are by a brand called Cook's Tools. I think that may be Belk's store brand, but I got them on clearance, you know, same time I got these. I treated myself one year with some Christmas money got me some pretty bakeware and this ceramic cleans up really easy you'd be surprised I wondered how that was gonna work you know these like white baking dishes I thought that is gonna be a mess but you know this is a glazed bakeware ceramic stuff it really cleans up pretty easy stuff seems to come right off of it all right, let's start building this lasagna. I put a little bit of this sauce down, and I've got some oven-ready lasagna, and this is from the Dollar Tree. I have used Kroger brand, Walmart brand, the Barilla. I've used them all. This one, Columbia. I got this at the Dollar Tree, and I just can't wait to try it. And it's so long. That's one thing I didn't like about the Barilla. It was like sheets. And you know, I'm used to these. One thing about these ceramic dishes, they like to wobble on you. They ain't exactly square. Forget about that, so let's do that. So you've got sauce, nudes. Now you're gonna put your cheese mixture. Spread that out a little bit. Take about half of this sauce. Let's do some more noodles. You know, I'm just a simple cook. I don't use a lot of fancy ingredients. I don't use a lot of fancy, make a lot of fancy stuff. I make stuff my family's gonna eat. And I have to tell you, growing up, you know, my daddy, he was one of nine children when he was growing up and they ate a lot of beans and they ate just very simple garden and hunting food with that many kids and his mama my mama was a wonderful wonderful cook but when I was a child you know daddy he liked what he had growing up so mom, she did, you know, the basic thing. She done a lot of other stuff too. It's funny now thinking back, I don't know what we ate. Except beans and taters. I know there was more than that. But anyhow, daddy was not a fan of this kind of food like lasagna. Spaghetti, lasagna, pizza. Hey, that wasn't nothing that he was familiar with growing up. And he was not a fan of it. So mama did not make it often. If she did make spaghetti or or we had pizza daddy was a fireman growing up so he would work 24-hour shifts and then be off for 48 and he worked as a house painter and wallpaper guy on those days off but anyway he, she would make it when daddy was you know working because that was nothing that he liked honestly my mom did everything for us i did not know how to do anything i had never been in the kitchen I was not lazy. I made great grades. I made really good grades. 
and I was in a lot of extracurricular stuff. I worked um, year round, so I was busy. And Mom had done everything. I didn't know how to cook nothing. Anyway, when I got married, I decided I wanted to make a homemade lasagna for me and Patrick. And I found me a little recipe. It was just basically this recipe right here. I've just learned to doctor it up with spices and stuff. But anyway, I had zero experience. And we got that lasagna out, and the top of it was so crunchy. On down on the inside was good, but it tasted great. And I was really proud of it, but I did not, I just could not figure out what happened with the top of that thing. So I called Mama, and I began to tell her what all I'd done, and she said, how long did you cook your noodles? And I said, well, about 45 minutes. And she said, you boiled those noodles 45 minutes? And I said, uh, I didn't boil any noodles. The recipe said to bake it for 45 minutes. And she said, you were telling me you put those noodles in there right out of the box. I said, yes. Nowhere, nowhere in that recipe did it say boil the noodles. It said place the noodles in the dish. So that's what I did. That was the crunchiest top layer. Once we removed it, the rest of my lasagna was wonderful. But you know, that just goes to show you we learned from our mistakes. And I was doing no-bake noodles before no-bake noodles were even a thing. <laughs> so I hope you get a kick out of that little story. Just had to share that with you. All right, that looks good. Well, yeah, let's just do a little bit more. That's perfect. I'm going to cover this with some aluminum foil, put it in the oven, 375 degrees, cook it about 45 minutes, somewhere in there I'll check it, and then I'll uncover it the last few minutes of baking so that it can brown up. And always spray the underside of your aluminum foil before you put it on here because you don't want to pull all that pretty cheese off when it melts. Here comes the lasagna out of the oven. You're going to want to let this stand for as long as you can. And um, it's always really hard to get that first piece of lasagna out, but it was so good and gooey. I, there was so much cheese in this. It was so delicious. But I think I probably let mine stand maybe 10 or 15 minutes while I was putting salad stuff together. You can never go wrong with lasagna. We love it around here. The last meal of the week was requested by my husband and it's just breakfast for dinner. So I'm frying up some sausage. This is that Swaggerty's All Natural that they subbed in one of my grocery hauls. That was the greasiest sausage. I don't know where all that grease came from. It tastes okay, but it wasn't my favorite. You see, I'm having to blot some of the grease out. And to make gravy, I just use probably each end sliced off of the roll of sausage and crumbled that up and then I put some flour down in it uh, to try to thicken it up and cooked that out then I added milk in and I honestly do not have any measurements you just have to feel this but according to how much sausage and flour you've used I season it up with some salt and pepper and you just cook it up till it kind of thickens as it cooks and you'll feel whenever it's the consistency that you like. I had some frozen biscuits that I just pulled out of the freezer. I just was taking all the shortcuts I could. My daughter scrambled us up some eggs. This was the most comforting meal. It tastes great. I also wanted to show you this jam so you can see their website. This is a, a, a local business to me, and these jellies are wonderful. They have a spiced peach that is to die for. Friends, thank you so much for coming this week. I hope you will find a meal that you like or just something that you haven't made in a while or hadn't thought about. Don't forget to check out Megan's What's for Dinner after you're done here. 
I'll see you back Wednesday night with another grocery haul and Sunday night at my regular 8 p.m. posting time with another What's for Dinner. Until then, I hope you have a great week and I send you love from my kitchen.